Yes, I, I should also say this because I've worked with people being going and sometimes um, sometimes people who get into the observer very very quickly and sustain the observer very very quickly. Um, you know, they because they're in the observer, they feel that everything that they do and say and everything that comes their way because they're in the observer, that means they're indestructible and they're at the, and all their choices, but. I, I would sort of frame it as you're still new to the observer. It needs time to mature, and for and that test will come to pull you down. So that every, not every thought that comes to you when you're in the observer, uh, and everything that comes your way, is, is a divine orchestration. Uh, some of it, a lot of it, will be temptation. So, um, and where will the temptations come? And that's a clue. They'll come where you're weak. Yeah, they'll come. They're not going to come where you're strong. I mean, if you're like, if you're a donut addict, you know, it's going to be like now that you're in the observer and someone's offered you a donut. Well, you're in the observer, so you can have a donut. You know, it's going to come where you're weak. So that's a clue. So if you're in the observer and someone is saying, let's let's go and chant Om for the afternoon, that's not where you're weak, is it? Really, it's not going to be where you're weak. So that's probably like in alignment with the observer. Let's chant Om. Someone says like there's um, you're an observer and there's a crazy party, and we're going to be listening to um, we're going to listen get to gangster rap, gangster rap, in this party tomorrow. You go well I'm in the observer so that's God, you know that's God, uh, uh, you know and I'm in the observer so I'm going to be a blessing to these people playing gangster rap for, for the evening. That's not, that's probably you're still new to the observer so you haven't yet got spiritual discernment. So it's probably a good idea to say no to the gangster rap party, uh, because that is um, that is probably something coming to take you down. So if I'm if I'm in the observer and something comes, and especially if you're new and it's got it's potentially could be I know you're in the observer, so you don't think about things. But let's say intuitively, not think about it. It's a, you know, and I'm just saying it in front of you. Like you have your weaknesses for historically. You have your weaknesses historically. Like you don't have to think about like chanting Om for the evening or sitting in a park or going to a spiritual group. But if it's like something like uh, your if you know family, if it's something like I've had problems with family in the past and the family are asking me to uh, come and join the family debate for the afternoon, <laughs> I don't know. Family. Or if it's like I, I have a history of food addiction. You know, so if my if my friend from my food addiction days is saying, look, uh, there's a new buffet restaurant that's opened up in town and they're offering free food for the first day, do you want to come along? If you're in the observer, it's going to feel like, and you're new to the observer, it's going to feel, well, nothing can go wrong. I'm in the observer. I'll just observe being in a buffet restaurant with my friends. But you're still not yet at the level of full spiritual discernment to be able to, to tell everything. So you don't know that something's out. Here's the thing, and Hawkins talked about it. Temptation comes, and this is something I, I don't really share that much in video. You, see, you get what's called luciferic temptation. This is a really important concept to understand. I, I shouldn't say the word understand because you're in the observer, but never mind. So just because you've done a lot of spiritual work and you're in the observer and you're quite, you've done quite a lot of stuff each time you go to a higher level, there is a spiritual temptation that you have not yet resolved. I don't know if this makes sense. So even though you know a certain amount of stuff around spiritual stuff, as you go higher, it's like the collective ego has high-level temptation. That, uh, how, what is high-level temptation? It's like... Hmm, it's, okay, here's, like, here's an example of a high-level temptation. I'm going to make some stupid examples up. High-level temptation is, now that you're in the observer and you, you love everyone, it's like, and someone offers you to go to a, a buffet restaurant, and you think you're going to go there and be an observer and love everyone in the buffet, buffet restaurant. Um, you, you are not yet aware that... Um, 
you have not yet got spiritual discernment around what's, what, what, is, what you're being asked to do yet. You're, because you, even though you're advanced, there are things which, which you're not yet aware of to know that something is wrong. Does that make sense? Even though you, okay, I love everyone, I'm in the observer, I'm going to, wherever I go, I'll stay in the observer, and everyone is a child of God. But, so that sounds like, you know, there shouldn't be any more to know, shouldn't it? But you still haven't got, you still don't know that something is wrong in that context, something is out. So, so you'll be tested on things which look, sound good, but something is not quite, you haven't yet got the level of spiritual wisdom to know something tiny, so it sounds good, but you're not yet you're not yet able to pick up that something's slightly off. Whereas when you get to a higher level, I mean, I'm not trying to make this intellectual. When you've spiritually discerned things, you'll know that this could potentially be a a place where the collective ego is going to try and derail me on my weakness. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'll give you the example that Hawkins talked about. So Hawkins talked about, so he's at the level of enlightenment and there's a, there's a high level test at the level of enlightenment uh, where um, you're in the non-dual field and you feel invincible and you're in the observer and a non-verbal energetic thing comes up to own your power in the world to do good. Own your power in the world to do good. That was the one that Jesus got, you know. Mm -hmm. Lucifer said to him, you know, uh, like, uh, you know, own your, own your power. That sounds great, doesn't it? Like you've got all this infinite power, so if you take ownership of it, you can do lots of good in the world. Doesn't that sound, that sounds good. So what, what's out? The, the thing that's out is like God is, you know, I mean, you don't take personal, you don't use the power personally to do good in the world. So that's a very advanced, that's a very advanced thing, which you wouldn't, at a lower level, you wouldn't get it. Like, okay, now that you're, now that you're in the infinite, you know, so why don't I take ownership of being in the infinite to do good? But something was wrong in that. There's something wrong in that. And so you fall. And when you get high, you can fall very, very, you can fall down very fast. Uh, which is uh, which is not which is not a good thing. So you got to realize that uh, you know to keep a level of um, spiritual awareness. Um, the other thing is, um, so we can say as you get get higher and higher, you get different things out. You can get demonic attack, like energies, dark energies hitting you out of nowhere. That's but have complained about demonic attacks. Jesus talked about the, the Luciferic temptation uh, when Lucifer offered him the world. But it's just owning power in the world. So all of these things come and they're testing you at different levels. So just could, could depression be considered a, a demonic attack? Depression? Yeah. Depression, um, it would depend, you know, because usually depression, like depression is like something that you, you, you thought was going to be the basis of your, of your happiness can no longer be, yeah? Ooh, say that again. Yeah. All right, let's say all my life I believed if I was really, really thin, because I, mean, I had an eating disorder, I was overweight, if I could become really, really thin, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. And then if someone like, and then I, th and I and think this is the only thing that can make me happy. I was on diets a lot of the time. And, uh, and then suddenly that illusion gets broken. Someone says that that's total crap, you know. Uh, then I will become depressed because that's the only thing I can think of that would make me happy. So there is no point to live life any longer if I can't be thin. So I'll just commit suicide. Another one, I think that, uh, people, people who think they're beautiful, yeah, and they get a lot of approval and affection because they're beautiful. Uh, like lots of people say, "Oh, you're so you're so handsome." This one didn't really happen to me, but anyway, Karen, um, you're so handsome, and you get a lot of things. And so, and then one day, people say you get an accident, you have all scars down your face, and then you stop getting that affirmation, and you thought, "Well, 
the reason I'm happy is because people tell me I'm beautiful all the time. And suddenly you have scars on your face, and suddenly people stop saying that to you. And then, and you think that's the only thing that can make you happy, is that people tell you how wonderful you are and how beautiful you are. Then you would go into a state of depression. As soon as that happens, you go into a state of depression because you realize, oh, I can never be, I can never get people's compliments again for the rest of my life. So you go into, well, there's no point to live, I'm depressed. Uh, Hawkins gave an example of, of this. So there was a woman, something like this, not exact, but there was a woman and her son was, went into war and then he got killed. Or not, not that he got killed. Basically someone said, oh look, we found your, your son's tag, he died. And then she went into a state of depression. You know, she went into a frozen state. Well, there's no point in living now because the reason that I'm living was for my son. And if he's dead, there's no point to live. So she went into a depressed state. So the thing with depression is it's the idea that you projected that happiness comes from something outside of you. Happiness comes from me being attractive. Happiness comes from my love addiction to uh, to this person, or my codependency on this person. So if this person, say, I'm codependent on a person, love addicted to a person, and they get run over by a bus, and I think this is the only th reason why I'm happy, then I'd go into a state of depression. Well, blah, blah, I just got run over by a bus yesterday, so I'm depressed now, and I think there's no point to live. I might as well just run, throw myself off a bridge. You know, there's no point to live any longer. So. Uh, people who are depressed may have a few things, you know, or, oh, my life has gone past, I'm hopeless, there's no point in living, I'm depressed. You know, again, there's a projection, you know, there's a projection of something not working. I forgot why I was saying this. Did you ask, say something? Yes, I said, um, well, could depression be considered a demonic attack when you were talking about this very temptation and demonic attack? Well, yes. Um, you know. Because I'm, I don't suffer from depression anymore after I read um, the article, I don't know if you're familiar with it, The Emotional Sobriety, The Next Frontier by Bill W. Yeah. Um, so that, that cut off. He wrote that letter to a mother of a person, I think, who was depressed. Right. And he was depressed himself, yes. where he couldn't understand why he was sober and walk, taking long walks behind the his and Lois's house, stepping stones in the woods, and for 12 years, sometimes so depressed he couldn't get out of bed. Mm -hmm. Um, and he said, one day it just came to him, he said, my dependency of people, places, situations, or circumstances was still there. Yes. And he said, once, once that was cut off, I found that freedom, I found that quiet spot in the bright sunshine I've been looking for. And that cut off my depression right there and then, and I never had it back. But what you've just shared, I know that to be true, because yesterday I was asked a question I couldn't answer. Yes. And the lingering thought all day at work, you didn't know, he asked you didn't know, he asked you didn't know, you should know. And I came home exhausted and I had two hours sleep and I woke up and I, was dep I felt depression. So it's like depressive thought, not a state of depression where you're in it for days and once a week. Yeah. Just that sudden thought that stays with you and you think, why am I feeling this way? So where you said, like, I thought I was good at what I do. Yes. Suddenly I'm asked a question I don't know. Yes. Therefore you're not good. So that's, yeah, so exactly what you just said. Can yes. Can you tell us what that was called? You said emotional sobriety. The Next Frontier. Yeah. By Bill Wilson. Yeah. yeah, and you've got, there are PDF um, formats on Google. Um, um, and it was incredible because my mum was, I'll just show you quickly how I found that. My mother was here. Yes. From Croatia. And she stayed six weeks yes. over a really sensitive period for me. I always get depression over Christmas and New Year. Yeah. And then one day she came to me and I was sick in bed and I knew she wanted to tell me that she wanted to go. And yes. she's never in 23 years spent six weeks with me here. Yeah. And I just sank into the darkest, deepest pit because the object of, you know, I couldn't spend the last 23 years with her because she lives in a different country. Yes. And suddenly we could and she didn't want to anymore. She wanted to go home and she said there is a life for her there. Yes. I couldn't accept the fact my mother had a life somewhere else mm. that was apart from me. Yes. And then I found that article that was, committed, that was recommended by someone who's been in the program and has 25 years in OA and 13 AA. Yes. And when I read that, I was like, this is it. So it always arises because I want something even 
but justified ones are worse. Yes. Justified, quote unquote, yes. is what is wrong with wanting my mother here? You know, surely that's an instinct and a normal human sort of feeling about it. Yes. Um, and then when I read that, I was like, it just stopped dead in its tracks. And suddenly I started having more acceptance around life. I found this article about three years ago. Yes. And more acceptance around the certain things that come to their, they have their beautiful beginning, but they have their beautiful end too. Yes. And he helped me accept my father's passing. Yes. And appreciate 33 as I did have with him. My mother being there for five weeks and then going. So instead of just resisting life and yes. wanting it, yeah. I have Absolutely. I totally agree. And uh, for me, the... So, one, yes, and for me, you talked about can, can that be an attack, was it, or something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the, the, the ego, on a certain level, there is no such thing as separation. But on a certain level, it's like your ego and the collective ego are conspiring together to bring up and manifest everything uh, that can happen to pull you down. Even though on, on a certain level none of this exists, but on a certain level in the dualistic realm, it's like, well, the ego, your ego is energy, and the collective ego is energy. So it's a vibration, and the collective ego is a vibration. And so everything, everything, and you can say there's different vibrations associated with the different chakras. So you can say that things will mystically manifest out of either your own ego or your ego collecting the collective ego for you to choose situations for people to say certain things which are options for you to be pulled down. So yes, put it this way, if, uh, if, you're, if you've got... Well, let's make a, a silly one because I, it relates to myself. I'm a, I'm a food addict. So if I'm going to be... Uh, if my temptation is donuts and I, I choose now to be in the observer and to transcend my addiction to donuts, then when I'm starting my journey with donuts, you know, suddenly a friend will come up and say, "Look, come over to my place. I know he's got donuts there," and uh, and uh, that will be, and it it will it will be like something will or automatically orchestrate him to invite me out of nowhere. It'll come out of his lips. Come over to my place. You know, we're just going to watch a film. But, you know, he knows he's got donuts, I know that somewhere he's got And that is, that is a collective, that is a collective thing manifesting for an, op for an option for me to say yes or no to. So, uh, when, when you, ha when, if I have things you could say, let's say in a past life, we say something, I mean, I don't mind saying horrible things, or I don't know, well, let's, let's say, let's say I, I was a bank robber in a past life. You know, um, that's like, that's heavy karma. If I was a bank robber in the past, like they said, you know, like I robbed, I robbed a bank and like all, all the people there lost their money and they suffered and had miserable lives. So that's really heavy. So it, it can be like, um, it can be like, um, I'm trying to be good. I'm trying to be a decent, honest person in this lifetime. And then uh, suddenly, um, you know, somebody comes up with a really tempting offer uh, to do something, and and I have a have a weakness for that. Maybe it's another bank robbery. Who knows what it is? Uh, and if I say if I say yes to that, that can pull me down uh, really really badly. So that would be like um, no. I'm trying to explain that as a kind of a luciferic. Uh, you could have a luciferic temptation on what you've done from your prior karma in this lifetime, past lifetimes which if you say yes to, can pull you down. You can also have what I call, I mean, it's not nice to talk about it on camera, a de demonic temptation. So what is a demonic temptation? That's the horrible stuff. So let's say, what could be, uh, I don't know, it's not nice to talk about this stuff. Let's say I was an axe murderer in, my, in one of my past lifetimes. Uh, now, when you get to the more demonic stuff, it's like taking joy in other people's suffering. You mm -hmm. take joy, you know. Like well, as you get more spiritual, you, you don't you don't want to create other suffering. You suffer if you create. But as you get to more the demonic thing, you know, like oh, you know, wouldn't it be nice to just chop a few heads off and see them die? You know, isn't that fun? 
you know. So you have your demonic thing. So you get a demonic thing. Like you go, you know, someone someone comes up and says, it's going to be fun. We're going to, let's try and kill a few people today and get away with it. So you say yes to that. That's a demonic temptation. Mm -hmm. You have a weakness there where in some perverted way, you can see there's a payoff in doing that. Well, let's rob a bank. Let's kill someone and get away with it. You know, like, if you know addiction, you know there is a glee in binging on food. There is a glee in taking drugs. There's a glee in taking alcohol. There is a glee in stealing. You know, like, if I can steal something and get away with it, you know, if I can steal, if I can steal some money and get away with it, you know, or if I can, you know, so there's, there's a glee in inflicting harm on others. So, but if you're in a spiritual space and you say yes to that, there's a demonic temptation uh, that comes up, you'd be taken straight down to those levels. Uh, and it might be difficult to get back up again. So, yeah. So that was the demonic.